uh, uh, this problem is really beautiful because it has something in it that um, can we can go deeper instead of sine of nx and cosine of x we can choose different functions but let me show how one can uh, build something similar and how where to get it okay where to get some of the ideas so first of all note the following okay if you take any let for any alpha and beta real numbers such that alpha less than beta then the integral from alpha to beta of cosine nx dx that is 1 over n sine of nx between alpha and beta which gives me 1 over n sine of n beta minus sine of n alpha okay and the integral from a to b sine of nx dx will give me 1 over n minus 1 over n cosine n beta minus cosine n alpha so as you can see both these integrals because sine and cosine are between uh, absolute value are bounded less than 1 so this these two uh, integrals will go to 0 as n go to infinity so this this conclusion uh, will follow from this and the fact that this is true for any alpha and beta so by linearity if we take uh, take s of x uh, to be a simple or what step function on the interval a b okay then it's easy to see that the integral from a to b of s of x cosine nx dx and the integral from a to b s of x sine of nx dx will go to 0 as n go to infinity. Uh, we do not care about n equals 0 huh? so because we are looking at the conclusion when n goes to infinity so we can always assume that n is greater or equal than 1. So uh, now how do we go from a simple function to a continuous function? This is the beauty huh? and the fact that cosine and sine are bounded okay then it's very easy to see that okay let f be defined on a b which is continuous function so we know that f is going to be Riemann integrable f is Riemann integrable okay and what's going to happen is we are going to find a step function or simple function less or equal than f huh? such that so there exists a step function or st simple function such that the integral of f of x minus s of x dx will be between a and b will be as small as we want so in other words if you fix epsilon okay uh, for any epsilon positive we can find such function such that this is true okay so from there what do we do so this this property here is very important what I this this here one has to keep it always in mind how do we go from simple functions to continuous functions for the Riemann integration or oh, for the Riemann integral so here what happen is then uh, you look at now absolute value of what? of f of x sine I'm just going to show it for sine and you will see the argument is exactly the same for cosine minus dx minus the integral of s of x sine of nx dx so this is equal to absolute value a to b f of x minus s of x sine nx okay using the properties of the Riemann integrable so this is everything is Riemann integrable this is less or equal than the integral of f of x 
s of x sine of nx dx using the fact that sine nx is less or equal than 1 and as you can see you can even choose in fact that it's bounded uh, so in other words you can have similar if you have some functions for which you have some nice behavior uh, then you can also extend these exercises to them it doesn't have to be only for the sine and cosine so here what happened this one here is less than 1 and this one is positive uh, so this tells me that uh, integral from a to b of f of x sine nx dx minus the integral from a to b s of x sine of nx dx is going to be less or equal than a to b f of x minus s of x dx which is less or equal than epsilon okay so we can make this one as small as we want okay uh, so since when n goes to infinity so we have fixed epsilon we found the step function so now we let n goes to infinity okay so this tells me what that uh, I can make since I can make this one as small as I want I can find an n such that okay the absolute value of a to b s of x sine of nx dx less than epsilon this will tell me that for n greater than greater than n the integral from a to b f of x sine of nx dx as a value is less than epsilon plus epsilon to epsilon so so basically that the limit of this is equal to what so the limit when n goes to infinity of a to b f of x sine nx dx is zero as well as limit of the integral from a to b f of x cosine nx dx is equal to zero this is the famous uh, the Riemann Lebesgue lemma and now so the second part of the problem uh, we they ask us to find limit when n goes to infinity how we can use these previous ones to find the integral or limit of f of x time sine squared of nx it's just a simple application of this uh, wonderful riemann lebesgue lemma that we have just proven and for that you just use a little bit of trigonometry knowing that sine squared of nx is equal to one half one minus cosine two nx a little bit of trigonometry and therefore the integral from a to b f of x sine squared nx dx will be equal to one half integral from a to b f of x dx minus one half integral from a to b f of x cosine two nx dx so you see this one here this one will go to zero and this tells us that the limit when n goes to infinity of the integral from a to b f of x sine squared of nx dx will be equal to one half integral f of x dx which by the way is exactly the same limit if one takes the, in the same idea f of x because sine squared of nx dx we will find again a to b f of x dx